Hello and welcome to our Betfred Sports Talk here on Quest TV Network Studios. I'm Casey with the lovely Betfred's Peter Spencer. How are you doing today, Peter? Yeah, great. It's been a very exciting weekend. Lots going on. It has been a very exciting weekend, hasn't it? Well, first of all, we'll chat about the Premier League very briefly. But City did play Bournemouth this mm. week and it was a great game for them, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great for them, bad for Bournemouth. <laughs> um, I mean, it was always going to come. City weren't going to allow these uh, um, sort of below par performances of late to get in the way of getting themselves back on the. Uh, uh, the campaign to win the title once more or retain the title. Yeah. Um, so Betfred have City 10 to 11, still favourites to win the Premier League outright. Um, Arsenal have drifted slightly there at evens, um, even though they won as well. Um, United were led on the drift for the Premier League outright um, because of the success of uh, City and Arsenal. They've moved from 12 to 1 to 14 to 1. So that's where we are with the Premier League um, outright. And in the relegation, um, well, we still have Bournemouth as the favourites to be relegated. Um, Southampton next, they're both odds on. Everton, well, they're 11 to 10 now. Um, and Leeds and then Nottingham and Wolves are 4 to 1 with Betfred to be relegated. Amazing. And the, and the FA Cup as well. City is set to play Bristol on Tuesday, aren't they? Have you got any answers for us for that, Peter? Yeah, um, City play Bristol City, as you say, on Tuesday. Uh, Bristol 12 to 1, so we don't give them much hope. City 2 to 11. Um, to win the FA Cup outright, well, City are the favourites, um, 11 to 8. United 10 to 3. Brighton 5 to 1. Um, the big outsiders are Fleetwood and Grimsby, they're both 750 to 1 shots. Um, and in this particular game, we've got Haaland to score first. I mean, you wouldn't like to be a Bristol City um, <laughs> defender up against Haaland, would you? Um, he's 13 to 8 to score first. Uh, Foden, great that he's back in form now and uh, uh, orchestrated that win against Bournemouth, probably man of the match. He's 4 to 1 now um, to score the first goal with Betfred. United are at home against West Ham, too, aren't they? What's the look like for that game there, Peter? Well, United um, eight to thirteen um, to go and win that. West Ham have been in different form. Um, they're four to one. Uh, Rashford he can't do anything wrong at the moment. He's sixteen to five to score the first goal. Anthony Martial is nine to two. Ganacho, um eleven to two. And of course, yesterday was an amazing day for United. They lifted the cup against Newcastle. It was an incredible game, there, wasn't it? It was. It it showed. Um, uh, the calibre of um, his signings, um, how they, they came through um, in that game. Um, and I thought that it was um, tremendous for United to win the first trophy for six years. I didn't think Newcastle really turned up. Um, they didn't have much up front um, at all. Um, and the defence looked quite uh, stagnant. And it shows they've probably been uh, fighting above the weight in the uh, Premier League. I know they've drifted to fifth now because Tottenham winning against Chelsea. But um, I, di I didn't think they had that much. Um, and I think uh, Eddie Howe would go away and thinking, well, we've got a lot to learn there. Um, class came through in the end. Um, a Casimiro goal, for instance, was excellent. Um, and he, what a tremendous player he is. I think that uh, people were saying he was too old and he was just here for the money and all the rest of it. What absolute nonsense. He looks like he's lo absolutely loving it. He and he looks like a proper footballer. Knows when to foul, knows when to do something creative, and knows when to score. Um, and he could be player of the year for me if United wow. uh, continues to progress. And they, they are fighting on um, all four fronts now. Yeah, I was hoping for one more goal for United. I was thinking two isn't enough, but I mean, two was plenty, weren't it, really, in the end? Well, I don't like to be a creep, but Fred Doan did predict this in his column last week. There he said go. it'd be 2 now. He <laughs> said it'd be 2 now, just like it was back in 1999 when uh, United last played Newcastle at Wembley. And that was in the FA Cup, of course, when Paul Scholes and Teddy Sheringham scored. So he got that one right. It was 2 now. Um, and it, as you say, it could have been 3 or 4. Um, and it, if it wasn't for uh, Fernandez uh, being so greedy at the end, then it would have been at least three. Mm. In Fred we trust, in Fred we trust. <laughs> and of course, United could go on to win the quad now as well, couldn't they, Peter? Well, they were 200 to 1 before the weekend. It, they haven't actually done the odds yet, but it's going to be something like 150 to 1. Um, they've got it all to do in that uh, Premier League title race, uh, 14 to 1 now. But the handle they place now with the FA Cup and the Europa League, um, so, you know, uh, that miracle could actually be on. Um, wouldn't it be tremendous if United should mark the first season in Eric Ten Hag's reign with 
the four. Mm, pretty amazing, wasn't it? And Sunday was a crazy day for sport. You know, football was amazing. But then in the evening, the boxing world took over as Jake Paul took on Tommy Fury. And thankfully, Tommy did win. But it was a bit of a strange fight, wasn't it, Peter, really? Yeah, I mean, that will have cost us um, a fair amount because mm. um, Tommy was the uh, the outsider. But it, it was a very, very um, odd occasion. There were so many things wrong with it. First of all, there was only eight rounds. Then um, the most amazing thing for me was when the uh, YouTuber's uh, brother joins in and starts calling Tommy Fury, hey, get this, a bitch. I mean, how, how offensive is that? Uh, you ought to try being a football ref for a weekend and see what he gets called in those games. But to call him a bitch, it was just uh, almost comical. And then they put a, a thing on the telly saying, if you've been offended by that, I mean, offended by that word, unbelievable. Um, you shouldn't be up at uh, half ten watching it if, if you're going to be offended by the word Absolutely. bitch. Um, anyway, so that, that happened. And, and that could have only like, slightly amused the Fury camp. <laughs> it was an unbelievable experience and you know they, they just want to cut out of it and carry on with the YouTubing and we'll carry on with the boxing yeah. and the boxers it's just a class above I mean he was a boxer and the other bloke was just a brawler it's like watching a, a pub fight down the windmill in Denton or something it's just a nonsense it's just like he it, it just it couldn't fight he just like slugging it out and then hugging each other. I mean, they should have called it a hug fest. <laughs> to me, I just think, I completely agree with everything you said, but I just think as well, the whole like, saying you're late kind of thing, you're a YouTuber, stay where you belong, don't try and get into the world of boxing because you're not going to win anywhere, are you? It's going to crumble and it's going to look stupid on TV, aren't you really? Well, Tommy Fury is hardly the greatest boxer on earth. Yeah. I mean, he was, he's, he's called so famous because of Love Island. <laughs> but at least he can box he, he's actually been trained to do it he, he actually it looks like he's been in the gym on in the ring since he was about sort of 12 13. Yeah. he knows how to box he can do jabs he can do the rest of it he can move around the ring he doesn't lunge around hook trying to hug his opponent <laughs> and then try and go for a lucky um lucky shot which was the other fellow was doing it was absolutely nonsense and if they have a, a rematch well oh, they, they won't get that much money because i for one won't be tuning in no. because you have to stay up with the kids to watch that they're both late at school today because of it um i took it started an hour later than you're supposed to have done um well if they have a rematch they won't sell it because yeah. it's just Ridiculous. I agree. I thought the first fight was so boring. We didn't watch it all again, do it. A rematch just seems so pointless. It wasn't even excited to watch it the first time, alone again. Yeah. No way, not happening, no for me. But it's different news. Betfred Super League has been incredible to watch recently, and Warrington is still top of the table, aren't they, Peter? But what's it looking like there for them? Well, um, the odds on Warrington have been uh, cut quite dramatically now. Um, the top of the table, I mean, they've only played two matches. St Helens was the big one for me. They came back from Australia mm. and won the uh, the world crown there against uh, Penrith. Uh, 56 hours it took them to get back, apparently. Uh, I mean, I'm going to look into this, but they uh, went via Stockholm, uh, for instance. Um, so there must have been hassles with the flights. And they came by London and then back to Manchester eventually. Um, so they would have been absolutely shattered. And that's not to say they, they didn't celebrate somewhat as well mm. in Australia. So you wondered what sort of team that Paul Wellens had put out there. But he got he, he got the job done and they beat Castleford. Um, and they're now um, on the, the, the run to try and get five Betfred Super League uh, wins on, on the bounce um, to win the, the grand final. The two to one to go on and do it. Um, and really, there isn't many people who think they won't. Uh, but they are getting challenged now by Warrington and Wigan to an extent. Um, and so he, he, he's got it building up nicely into uh, a great uh, competition. And the games are on again on Thursday and Friday too, aren't they? So it is worth a watch. If you do want to watch any uh, Super League, it's worth a watch. But in some different news, we have a lovely story to bring you, don't we, Peter? There's a lovely 83 year old man who has won a big chunk of money, hasn't he? Yeah, this is um, a fellow called Fred Murray, who's 83 years of age. Um, and to him just now. He's won um, £75,000 from a £3 bet on the 49s numbers game. Biggest win of his life, of course. So I've been asking him what he's going to do with his money. He's been uh, married for many, many years, as he puts it. Um, and he's going to, um, he used to be a plasterer, so he knows all about decorating. He's going to um, get some money in to decorate every single room in his house oh. and then it could keep his wife happy. He's also going to put a patio up um in the, at the front of the house uh, the ultimate semi-detached house in um, edmonton green in london 
But what what's really resonated with me is every year, every Sunday for thirty years, his wife has made him a, a roast Sunday um, dinner um, every Sunday. And he's now going to stop that and he's going to insist that they go out every Sunday now for something to eat um, with his uh, 75,000. This guy's got uh, six grandchildren. He's got a father of three, six grandchildren, and he's lost count of how many great grandchildren he's got. But last time he added it up, there was 11 of them. Oh, so nice to hear that. It's a nice story. And I like, like when people like that get some money because it is so deserving for them, isn't it? That yeah. is so sweet. Oh, I love that. Thank you very much, Peter. If you do fancy a bet, you can bet online in Breakfast Stores and via the app as well.